So with this job, doing the control arms on this, I'm actually gonna do control arms along with the lower ball joints. It just takes a lot of banging and moving around and adjusting because you gotta move them out. And it's a lot easier if you bend back the shield because I had an issue with this lower ball joint right here, contacting the shield and it was hard for me to pull it out. But if you're just, if you just move it to the side, you should be good. Alrighty everybody, I got the VRT pulled into the garage here. I'm about to do the, uh, let it cool off for a second actually, I just took it on a little test drive because it's been a minute. But I'm going to do the passenger side control arm and the situation with this was that there's a uh, bung that's welded to the inside of the subframe that the front control arm bolt goes into and that bung has actually torn off the welds. So, luckily, I have my Firepower plasma cutter and my Lincoln Electric welder over there. So I'm gonna end up cutting a small hole in the subframe just so I can get some vice grips to hold that bunk still so I can loosen it. And then I'm gonna come from the top and there's a double whammy here. The motor, the oil pan's actually in the way of the bolt coming out. So what I'm gonna have to do is unbolt this top motor mount right here and lift up the motor just a little bit. It's gotta be like inch and a half to two inches of clearance that I need to be able to get that bolt out. But it's just another thing. All right, I got the wheel taken off now. So just to explain a couple things, as you can see right here, this bolt doesn't clear the oil pan. That's why I have to lift the motor up. Then after that, I have to just cut a small window in here with a plasma cutter and then grab the uh, bung with some vice grips. So I'm probably going to tighten it first, tighten it down, then cut up toss a couple tack welds on there to hold in place and then probably do just a half weld across the bottom of it and then call it a day weld this back in paint it and then i should be good to go and i want to do this all in one piece as opposed to you know not cutting enough the first time then having to cut more because then once you start getting pieces it's hard to weld it all back together what i want to do is have a clean cut that way i can grind it down make it fit and then have an easy weld going back in and that's why i'm using the plasma cutter it's really easy to use this tool to mark just a straight cut line and make it much easier to undo the the cut job so i'm gonna go ahead and get started here So, now that it's out, you can see down in here, that's the thing that broke off. So I'm just gonna end up doing a little bit of looking around, pull that off, clean it up, weld it back on, and then I should be good to go. All right, you can see what I mean whenever I say it's broken off. Let's see if I can get enough light in there. Yeah, as you can see, that's just spinning on the inside as I'm rotating this wrench. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna try and clamp onto that with my vice grips. My uh, my pair of vice grips, I had to grab a pair of needle nose vice grips. These are actually my nicest pair, I really like these. So instead of destroying them, what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna go ahead and weld on here. This is actually, it's contacting the, the subframe right here. So there is room to weld if I can get my welder in there. Epic! Alrighty boys, that did it. As you can see, this bolt is starting to come out. The bung is actually staying still, so I did enough welding. So I'm gonna remove these two bolt, these two bolts right here, the one, one on this side, one on the other side, to get this motor mount freed up. Since I'm pulling the motor mount bolts, I'm gonna go ahead and support the lower side of the motor. Alrighty, so I figured I'd do a little bit of explaining um, really quick. So I did these motor mounts on this car before I could actually take a video of it. These motor mount bolts, they're not technically reusable, and I don't recommend that you reuse these bolts. These threads that you see here for this bolt will actually physically, the, the bolt will elongate or stretch, which will deform their thread pitch, which 
locks them into place and does a really good job at holding these bolts in but the bolts that are stretched to yields are on the motor side i'm fairly certain you do want them to stay in place on the motor side if this motor mount gave out probably the whole motor would fall out but uh, it's really important whenever you do this work that you get a motor mount bolt kit ECS tuning they have bolt kits for these whenever you get your motor mounts highly 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 recommend that you get a stretch bolt kit you don't want your motor falling out that's not something that's enjoyable. funny funny story the reason I did the motor mounts on this car is this specific one right here the probably the most important motor mount out of any of them was only held on with one bolt when I bought the car it was only held on with one bolt out of two that's kind of important and even that one the whole motor was moving side to side in fact so much so that the downpipe had actually moved down and contacted the power steering rack which had caused a fitting to break off and then i didn't have power steering that's a different story but it was really really close to falling out for now i have these motor mount bolts pulled out on both sides so it's good to go ahead and lift up the motor and again my mission here is to lift up this motor just enough only to get it lifted up enough to get the bolt out oh good lord look at that look at that with this one you might have to lift the motor too just follow the exact same steps that i showed you and then over here you have another bolt to take out it's this one down here to be able to get the this side of the uh control arm out but i will say there's a nut on the top i think it's a 17 millimeter nut basically you just got to break that free and get it out Alrighty, so i got this bolt out it was an 18 millimeter bolt with a 17 millimeter nut now to my knowledge these are reusable i'm actually going to reuse this bolt too this control arm is good to come out it might need a little bit of banging to get out of this side and this side now i have to just take off this upper nut right here and then this whole thing should free up this is a 11 16th nut on the top of the lower ball joint it's really easy you just got to break it free So I've got this not free. I'm good to go ahead and pull this thing free. Good, bring it back down. Just like that. Easy peasy, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and get the next one assembled. Got my new control arm right here. My new lower ball joints. My locking pin for the ball joint nut. And then my proper nuts and bolts to go into the lower ball joint. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure out the best way of getting this on. so I got this lower ball joint all put together now I'm just gonna go ahead and maneuver this control arm in to where I can insert the bolt through the bottom and then insert insert this bolt through the side and get her all put back together just like that She's all tightened down. Now all I have to do is drop the motor, um, put in the upper motor mount, weld on this little window, and then I should be good to go. And that'll finish up the control arm job. So I'm gonna get those things done really quick. All right, I got my two motor mount bolts cinched down. Motor's in place. Control arm is replaced. Now all I got left to do is weld in this little window that I had cut to get to that bung and I should be all set to go. On the, I say bung because that's really the only thing I know to call it, I had laid down a significant amount of weld to it, um, way more than they would probably do for factory. I think factory they would probably just do two small opposing like quarter inch little tacks of weld to save material. I had laid down a lot, a little bit over half of the, the bung I had actually laid down with weld. So it's not going anywhere. In fact, it's probably stronger than the other side. But on that note, if you ever run into this issue, you basically have to go do this exact same thing 
uh, it's it's a pretty annoying process with a welder or with someone that has a welder it's doable Alrighty, I've got this little window welded back on and then uh, I'm just gonna use this here black spray paint and just go over my uh, welds go over my two spots that I ground to the chassis just something to something to cover up the welds and make it look a little bit more neat because why not if you like the video feel free to like comment and subscribe I have other things coming for this build I'm gonna get a new ECU here in a little bit allows me to turn the power up but i do have to get a new clutch because this one's kind of toast but other than that i'll be seeing y'all in the next video thank you very much